Hello Games people, time to have a look at stage 3 of our double entry process. We're now posting from our cash books and petty cash books into our ledgers and we'll also see discounts allowed and discounts received dealt with. Just a quick recap, they're the books of prime entry, all of them including the day books. The first place transactions are entered, so open the envelope, enter checks received or open emails, enter remittance advice for our cash book receipts. And from there, they go into the double entry system or they, the double entry is completed. Uh, so make sure you're fully familiar with the cash book and petty cash structure before trying to learn the entries into the ledgers. On the old bookkeeping, one exam, it was a worst done task and it's a little bit better on the transactions paper. That's possibly because of a few variations on the theme. Uh, the simple, more common one is that it's a book of prime entry and part of the double entry system, in which case the entries in the cash book of the entries, so for a cash sale, debit the cash book, credit sales and VAT. But it can be a book of prime entry only. If that's the case, we'll keep a bank and cash control account, usually at the back of our ledgers. The manager or supervisor will deal with that. And that means that in our cash book itself, we don't need to have brought down and carried down balances which means our staff don't know how much is in our business bank account. And you could also have versions where you only see the receipts or payment size, particularly in an exam question. It fits onto a computer screen better for an exam question. But it's also about fraud and error prevention. If you have only access to one side of the cash book, whether it's manual or computerised, you're not going to be able to cover up anything you're trying to do wrong and you're less likely to make an error because you only see the one side, you can't put anything the wrong side of a cash book. So let's have a look what we're going to be dealing with. This is our petty cash book that we're going to use. Uh, we started off with £100, we spent actually £78 and then we've topped it back up from the bank to £100 and we have a choice we can post these totals into our ledgers or we can post them into the cash book and then into our ledgers as long as we don't do things like posting the back from the, straight from the cash book and from our cash book. So we'll just be careful when we're dealing with that, we'll show how it's done. So this is our cash book receipt side. If we had two sides together, it looks like this, debits, credits. Uh, dates, details, folio tells you whether it's a credit transaction, sales ledger or main ledger, so there's a cash sale there coming in as opposed to a credit customer paying us. Hence the difference in the VAT, because the VAT for the credit sale was posted from the day book. We've also got the brought down and carried down balances here. So on the credit side, we've got mostly main ledger entries because lots of expenses for a business and then we're paying a couple of suppliers as, as well for purchase ledger and that's us taking our cash out so whether we want to leave it as 11 and 67 or 78 and 78 it's up to our system what we're used to dealing with. So this is our main ledger that we're going to post into uh, so we'll start off posting some receipts. So this is the debit side of our cash book in to make life easy sometimes. I'll let my students write the word in or receipts on them for their first manual exercises. And we might as well deal with our memorandum account. So the discounts allowed isn't part of the double entry, so we need to make sure we're doing debit and credit entries just because it's at the top of the page and it's nice and easy to do with. So nowadays, since 2014, in fact, we post credit notes on the system when our customer takes a discount. And then we have to separate the VAT when we deal with the credit note. So just going to allow a book to be, which means we need in our VAT account a debit entry, just going to allow a book be, and we need the credit entry in our sales ledger control account, our receivables. Debits and credits adding up. So we posted our discount allowed day book. If you see a three column cash book, the discount allowed is in a third column. That causes real confusion with VAT, so it's not normally done that way anymore. So what have we got? 
up then. So we've got debit entries, if it's part of the double entry. So this will be a credit entry. So that's I'll just bring down now. Sales account was higher up. Net of course, they're not analysed, you have to remember to take the VAT off them when you post them. Now our other column, there isn't another ledger, we just need to look at the individual items. So the cash transaction between the cash and the bank, this one's actually us uh, going to the bank and taking £400 out of the cash, that won't be part of this. It'll be in the journals, but the loan uh, doesn't really matter what date because it's a single item. That's us getting some money from the bank, and then the owner's putting in some more capital. It'll also be a journal entry as, as well, just have to show that, it doesn't fit into any other table. So that's all these items entered as long as it's part of the double entry system. So if we do the payments next, so the VAT we've analysed in the petty cash, so we'll have to remember to deal with that later. Uh, we've now got discounts received to deal with first. easy bit just done out of the way. So notice a lot more items here, a lot, bit more variety. We've still got VAT to deal with though, so uh, that, this is the fact that we're going to claim back. Cash book payments. And it was 60 from uh, purchases and telephone bill. Uh, purchases we've got up here, so overheads just watch out because on some cash books the VAT isn't analysed you have to remember which to post net like overheads and cost wages it's nothing to do with VAT and then we need to look at the other just make sure we know what we're dealing with so there's our bank that doesn't need entry our drawing so that's the owner taking out their own capital. Uh, 400. And then this is our petty cash amounts. So it's incorporated into our bank total, so that's fine. So back to our petty cash. in there. Uh, well, we've got £11 VAT and they're all purchases so £11 
and that means that we've got, so we spent 78, 67 pounds worth of expenses and as is only little things like travel stationery, postage and these are the ledger accounts we've got, we haven't got ledger accounts for stationery, they'll go in the overheads. So now we've done that, uh, we'll be able to balance off the accounts, I'll save time by doing it and just have a quick look. So our sales ledger, these are our customers, uh, therefore they're in the receipt side. So Smith and Uda, so Smith still owes us £10, Baines owes us £196, Uda's cleared his account. And in our purchase ledger, so these are the accounts that were mentioned in the cash book payments. Uh, we have cleared Androsky's with a discount and a payment, but we still owe Mr. Gray £200. So if we go here, I've cheated a bit again, so say watching me spend half an hour balancing off accounts, we have, I've now balanced off the allowed discounts you see sales, purchases and everything else, which means we can check the our balance, or at least start filling in some numbers and have a look at what we haven't got. So what have we got, discounts allowed is now 35, discounts received has gone up to 170, payers, sales Credit entry can of course be both sides. Five to vote down the balance. And then we've got the yeah, capital's gone up. There's a bank loan. And there's the drawings. There we are. So what's missing now? Uh, we haven't got our petty cash control. Well, if you remember, we actually took some money from the bank to top our petty cash back up to its interest amount of 100. And we haven't got our bank and cash. Now, because we've only got one side of it and no brought down balances, we'll have to do what you would normally do if it wasn't part of the double entry system. So, let's have a look and do pay bank and cash control accounts. So what we've done here, so this is our receipt side. So in my bank control account, which I've already done just to save a bit of time, we started off with 150, that was what you saw in the initial trial balance. Cash book receipts, 3,740. There's no brought down totals, it's actually what's gone into the bank. If you'd got a brought down total, you would have to take it off the number here. And then in our cash, we've had 670 go in. Again, no brought down total to confuse us. Now, on our payment side, we have got 2,528 going out, including topping up the petty cash. So, not, it's not so shown as a separate line. And we got £310 going out from our cash control account. So balanced off we have 1,362 in our bank and 1,060 cash. And hopefully 
hopefully it now balances off. So we know we haven't made any mistakes. And we could have made mistakes that were entries of reverse or in our double entry system or errors that compensated it for each other. But you'll learn about those in the next unit. So we posted everything into our ledgers from our cash book and our petty cash. If you see, when you see a petty cash question, you'll see uh, more selections of which we put everything today into overheads. You'll see the stationary and travel accounts to post into for the petty cash questions, and everything balances off nicely. If you haven't got the brought down and carried down totals in the cash book, which is usually a good idea in real business, you have to work out a bank control account, cash control account. Uh, or just get you out. Again, that's another little question.